Good morning and congratulations to the class of 2021. I would like to welcome all of you to the virtual University of California, Irvine, Paul Murad School of Business commencement ceremony and to thank all the families and friends that have gathered this morning to celebrate the wonderful accomplishments of the 2021 graduates. Though we were not able to be in person this year, it is still right and fitting that we celebrate this tremendous accomplishment that makes this day special. To the class of 21, well done. You've officially completed your journey with the Mirage School and can now join our alumni community of over 12,000 individuals spread across the United States and in over 36 countries. You have excelled and thrived under what can only be described as extraordinary circumstances and earned a degree that truly speaks to your work ethic your dedication, and your commitment to excellence. I have only had the great privilege of serving as a Dean of the Morad School for six months. Yet, I certainly understand the challenges you've overcome, and more importantly, the heights that you have achieved. Many of you have earned your degree while working multiple jobs, raising a family, quarantining under less than ideal circumstances. You've overcome glitchy Wi-Fi connections and collectively, we've all become Zoom experts. As the very world before us has changed, despite all the chaos that was created, you made the decision to continue your education and to strive towards excellence. Class of 2021, you are the epitome of perseverance. Your education and newfound knowledge is something that no one will ever be able to take away from you. And certainly today is the commencement. It is the starting point for you to move on to even bigger and better things. Certainly I remember with great fondness when I graduated with my undergraduate degree, nothing on that day would have ever told me that I would be addressing you today as the Dean of a business school. But certainly I know that path was started and formed through my educational experience. I know what my education has done for me and my family, and I can't wait to see what your education will do for you and yours. Now, no matter where you go, remember the lessons that this year has taught us. Yes, it has been very traumatic, but as we have coped and as we have dealt with this major health crisis of COVID, certainly all of us have learned the value of empathy, flexibility, patience, and compassion. I am confident it is those attributes that will enable all of us to be successful as we lead organizations, communities, and our families going forward. Congratulations on this fantastic accomplishment. We wish you all the best going forward, and please do make sure you stay in touch with your Mirage community. Hello and welcome everyone. I hope all the graduates know my name, Terry Shevlin, Associate Dean for Research and uh, Faculty Director of the PhD program here at the Paul Murad School of Business at the University of California, Irvine. I'm pleased to present and honor these graduates of our PhD program. These students were admitted to the PhD program from an applicant pool of over 300 individuals for 10 to 12 slots. The PhD involves two years of intensive graduate level study, coursework, a major field exam, then another two to four years identifying and working on the dissertation, plus working on joint research with faculty and the other students. Thus, it takes a total of four to six years to earn their PhD. The students work closely with their thesis advisor and other faculty in completing their dissertation. These graduates now join the faculty at schools around the world to teach and conduct research in business. Some also have taken positions at leading firms in industry. We have 14 graduates this year, and I'm pleased to uh, present each of them to you. I'm going to read the list of graduates one by one, their name, their dissertation paper title, and the name of their faculty chair advisor. I'm going to read the names alphabetically. Luming Chen, dissertation paper title. Quid pro quo, liquidity insurance in a repo network. Chair Zheng Sun. 
Our second graduate, Ali Hassan Zadeh. New operations research models for emerging problems in production, service and sports. Co-chair faculty were John Turner and Louis Gui. Our third graduate, Heejin Kim. Thesis title, an attention-based model of multiple team memberships. Again, co-chairs, Gerardo Ockhausen and Maritza Salazar. Our fourth graduate, Jin Sik Kim, an essay in value creation with digital technology, the role of machine learning and human experts. Chair, V. Vijay Gurbanasani. Our fifth graduate, Juho Kim, three essays on a sharing economy platform, evidence from Airbnb. Chair, Sanjeev Dewan. Our sixth graduate, Shafan Ng. Thesis title, Patent Collateralization and Tax Motivated Outbound Income Shifting. Chair, Terry Shevlin. Our seventh graduate, Nia North. Paper title, Administering Aid in the Face of Scarcity, Downstream Impacts on Holistic Wellbeing. Thesis Chair, Connie Peckman. Our eighth graduate, Anwida Prompiji. Consumer Online Search Behaviour and Empirical Analysis. Thesis Chair, Vijay Gurbashani. Our ninth graduate, Punit Sharma. Innovation in intra and interfirm context. Thesis advisor, Marguerite Wiersema. Our 10th graduate, Yushai Shi. Financial network and analyst information disclosure. Thesis chair, David Hirschleifer. Our 11th graduate, Yi Wei Derek Wang. Essays on technology and data analytics in operations management. Thesis chair, Shia Yin. Our 12th graduate, Shija Wu. Thesis paper, what is the role of visuals in earnings conference call slides? Thesis chair, Su Hong Tio. Our 13th graduate, Nan Xu. Essays on index funds and actively managed funds. Thesis chair, Lu Zheng. And our final graduate, but by no means least, Sha Kui Xu. Essays on managerial learning from financial markets. Thesis chair, Chuang Hong. The first award is for our summer paper submissions and presentations. This is awarded to students in their first year who prepared a research paper in their first year summer and presented it to faculty no later than the fall quarter of their second year. So congrats to the following individuals. We also recognise those students at the end of their second year who achieve high pass on their field exam. Uh, this year I'd like to congratulate.
the next award, Successful Advancement to Candidacy. We uh, recognise those that have advanced, done their oral exam and have got approval for their thesis topic. We award a fellowship to those students who at the time were third year students and successfully advanced by no later than summer of their third year. So congrats to the following individuals. Another award that third and fourth year students are eligible for is the Ray Watson Fellowship. This year uh, we had many good applications and it was no easy task to select the winners. So congrats to the following individuals. Again, let me congratulate our graduates on achieving this uh, wonderful uh, milestone in their academic careers. Of course, earning a PhD now is just the start of the next stage of your career. I wish you all the best and please do keep in contact with uh, Miraj, with the faculty here, your thesis advisors and to your fellow students, who many will be your future colleagues. So congratulations and best wishes. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Ali, a six year student in the operations or ODT group. I was honored to serve as the president of PhD Students Association and I sincerely thank you for nominating me for this position. I hope you all are safe and sound and hopefully by now everybody has gotten both doses of the vaccine. It is that time of the year and the school is preparing for graduation ceremonies, still ritual, I'd like to congratulate all Mirage graduates, especially PhD students. Their hard work and dedication after five, six, or seven years is finally paying off, and I wish everybody a successful career after graduation. To celebrate this great achievement, I, I made origami of the word Mirage. So these are six letters, and uh, it's a fun activity if you want to try it. Uh, just search origami letters. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand this over to Noelle and if she likes it, she will she can install it somewhere in the PhD office, you know, once we all uh, return to the building. Uh, it has been a very challenging year for all of us, uh, a year like no other. Uh, it brought a whole host of challenging challenges, our lives that were directly impacted by the pandemic. We couldn't visit family and friends. A lot of people lost loved ones, lost their jobs, faced economic difficulties, and the list goes on and on. On the bright side though, uh, if you want to see the glass half full, you were provided with a unique opportunity to learn, improve, and grow. We understood the importance of caring for loved ones uh, and having them next to us, or at least have a chance to visit them whenever we want it. We saw firsthand how well humans can adapt to different conditions. Uh, for example, working remotely for extended period of time, even if you're not used to it. And how valuable this adaptability is if you always find ways to exploit it. We learned that stepping outside our comfort zone is not necessarily a bad move. Uh, and for us graduate students and academics, um, the pandemic gave us a chance to employ new techniques in teaching, conducting research, and doing virtual meetings. And especially for us in the business school, it opened up the door for uh, new research opportunities. The stock market has been on a wild ride in the past year. Cryptocurrencies are soaring. Supply chain management really has changed quite a bit within the last year. Vaccine production and distributions have been ineffective at times and in different places. So there is a good potential to contribute to the betterment of our lives uh, using our knowledge as a business school graduate. Let me tell you my story uh, of how pandemic helped me in some way to succeed in the job market. I was a huge sports fan, especially basketball, and I was watching NBA and rooting for the Lakers last year. 
And then after the suspension of the games in March, uh, back in 2020, uh, everybody was talking about how the NBA and other sports for that matter should conclude their suspended season. Uh, I thought to myself, maybe I can use some mathematical models to address this question. Uh, I wrote a draft. I proposed a model to, uh, you know, conclude a season, suspended season in a shortened time frame with less number of games. And, uh, you know, together with my co-authors, we were able to submit it to a top journal, heard it, heard back very quickly. And it helped me tremendously in my job market. And I'm happy and super excited to announce that I'll, I have accepted a posi faculty position at the Alliance Manchester Business School. And I'm going to be moving to the UK uh, this summer. It has been quite a journey for me, and I've learned and grown so much over the past few years. I sincerely thank my family, my parents, my lovely wife for their sacrifice. I thank my two wonderful advisors, professors John Turner and Louis Gui, for their continued support and for always being there for me. And as a PhD officer, first, I should thank Noelle, uh, who has always been a great supporter and a great fr friend for me. She made my job and Shuan's job a lot easier. I thank Shuan for being such a great social chair. We were able to do a few virtual meetings and game nights, even though the pandemic had kept us all apart from each other. I also thank Terry for his leadership and guidance. I am grateful for all those individuals who helped our PhD program doing during the most difficult and uncertain times. AVR representatives who kindly accepted the role of helping out their fellow PhD students, our wonderful faculty advisors, Libby Weber, our decade mentor, and for Christina, Angela, and Shuan for decade-related activities. As a PhD student, uh, when you look back at what you went through in your PhD studies, there might be some areas where you feel like if you go back, you would do thing, things differently. And of course, there are areas where you are proud of the outcome and the process. Let me share with you what it stood out for me as a PhD student. I enjoyed taking courses from outside the business school and other departments within the school. And it helped me tremendously in my personal learning and my research, as well as expanding my network. Uh, I would strongly encourage you uh, to do the same and take courses from other schools, other, other universities, um, and uh, to build, expand your network. I would also recommend trying to have teaching experience as an instructor, uh, at least for, a for one quarter, and uh, also value your TA evaluations greatly. This uh, you know, came up a lot in my interviews, in my job market. And uh, even though I had a lot of, a ton of teaching experience, but none as, a, as an instructor. Uh, so that would help you greatly if you are determined to pursue an academic uh, job. For first and second year students, the start of your research as a PhD student will play a huge role in your success. I would say spend as much time as you can in selecting the right direction from the beginning, based on your background and interests. Remember, PhD is a marathon and not a sprint. You should pick a topic that you absolutely love to work on, so much so that if it takes years to publish, uh, you'll have, you won't lose interest and you'll, you'll continue strong until the very last step. Uh, finally, if you do have any questions or concerns uh, now or in the future, you can always count on me. I'll be available through email and LinkedIn and other platforms. I would love to contribute to your journey as many others have done to mine. And I'd like to once again congratulate all Mirage graduates. I wish a very happy and successful career for you all. Please stay safe, healthy, have fun, work hard, and I hope we all can get together sometime soon. All the best. Hello, everyone. This is Shen, your VP and social chair for the PhD Business Student Association. I am given another great honor to speak with all of you again this year virtually over Zoom. 
Thank you all for voting me last summer and having me serve my second term as social chair for the program. Reflecting on this challenging yet amazing year, um, although we didn't have a lot of in-person activities like the first year luncheon or research fast, brown bag series and year end dinner, we had so much amazing activities that have happened in the past year. In the fall, I hosted an online social, uh, social virtuals with a lot of first year and second year students uh, where we were able to get to know each other a little bit more and have some fun with um, activities that I have planned. In the winter, I um, hired someone to host the game and we were able to participate in a murder, a mystery murder series. Um, problem solving activities and we had our very first mirage uh, meteorologist from that activity and in the spring and by the time you are viewing this we've had a nerf gun party um, and hopefully for those of you who were able to join us you all had some fun with that being a social chair and being in my role, I had the great honor to work with so many amazing people in the program. We had uh, so much activities that were planned to help PhD students to help us get connected. Uh, working with Ali, our president, and Noel, our amazing um, director, we were uh, able to meet over quarterly and discuss plans and activities that would um, help the students best, especially during this challenging time. Um, Ali suggested Microsoft Teams, which many of you have participated. Uh, we were able to push for meetings among uh, uh, students at depart, uh, each department and in which hopefully help a lot of incoming students getting to know um, senior students. I was also um, in, very happy to work with Libby on Decade and um, working with Angela and Christina on our bi-weekly coffee hours on Monday. Um, in the purpose of helping Mirage PhD program became a more inclusive place for all of us. For many of these activities, I cannot take credit for it, but I was really very happy that I am a part of it. In addition to those uh, activities that I have involved in, we had Tanya and Gerardo and uh, for an amazing panel in the winter, helping PhD students to learn how to survive and then in the end, how to thrive in, in those PhD programs. Tanya and Phil was very uh, gracious to offer a Friday writing workshop um, and we were able to build a small community where a bunch of students get together and write together. Um, together even over um, Zoom. Noel's office hour was very well attended. So it, it just a lot of those things wouldn't happen if it was, you know, in person, if it was not for those amazing people. So I would like to thank all of you who are part of this uh, journey with me and helping me do my job so much easier. For the first year students, I would like to say that you've survived your first year of the PhD journey and good luck on your first year papers. For second year students, good luck preparing your comprehensive exams and you will soon enter uh, your dissertation proposal stage and time flies really fast when it's after your second year. Um, to those of you who are graduating, um, I was actually very honored to know many of you for which I can call friends. Good luck um, in your future endeavors. I know many of you would live United States, but 
please make sure to come back and visit us even virtually and give current students some words of wisdom because now you are all part of the Mirage PhD graduate alum and we will be super happy to see you sometime in the future and hear your uh, journey after graduation. And for everyone who is um, at a similar stage with me, whether you're proposing for your dissertation or trying to finish up your dissertation, I hope we will stay strong and stay connected and get through this journey all together. Lastly, I would like to share three things that helped me through the past year, and I hope you all can find it helpful for your journey. Pandemic has taught me to celebrate the small wins, and it is a such important skill to improve and master it on, especially for PhD students. Um, to celebrate the small wins in your journey, whether you get an A for a class, whether you finish your introduction section of a paper, whether you did data analysis, all the small wins counts. Also be grateful for whatever happened in your life. Gratitude is so important for us to help meaning in our lives and help Meaning, uh, help us find a meaningful and happier life. Support system is a key to survive my journey and it's everyone in my support system that made my journey so far an amazing one. Um, I have amazing advisor, colleagues, friends, staff, um, faculty members from even other department that all made my journey um, so much easier and uh, meaningful in its own way. Regardless of what role I will be serving, I, want, I wanted to say that I will always be here for each and every one of you for anything that you wanna chat, chat about, life, research, anything. I want to be a part of your support system to help you achieve amazing goals you have for your PhD journeys. I am looking forward and ready for next year. I hope I can meet many of you in person, whether it's at a coffee room or office desk, or we can all go over UTC, have some boba and wine together. Thank you everyone, have a great summer. Congratulations, class of 2021. You are all truly models of resiliency and innovation. It is an honor to be here with you and share what I hope you feel are a few words of wisdom from my personal experience. You may be asking yourself, who is she? And why is she our keynote speaker? To be honest, I ask myself, very similar questions when I was invited to speak to you. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized I am a microcosm of all of you. I graduated from the Executive MBA program here at the Paul Mirage School of Business in 2020. Our last quarter was entirely virtual as a result of COVID. I know we have a mix of undergraduate and graduate students here today. You have done an amazing job completing your degree during this unprecedented time, a year that has thrown our lives into a whirlwind. But your education, as many of you have already experienced, is a significant bridge to new opportunities. Before I go on, I'm going to do for you what I do with my medical students. Tell you up front the big takeaways. These are the things that you need to remember and walk away with. Remember, opportunity, innovation, and resiliency. Let's get started. I'd like you to consider how a bridge can be a metaphor for the limitless opportunities that your Mirage degree offers you. I've learned that there are many bridges in life. Bridges that you find, bridges that you build, bridges that you cross, and bridges that you become. I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, 
raised by a single mom who immigrated from Mexico at the age of 16. She worked two, three jobs at a time to send me to a better school so I could go to college. My mom would always tell me, when I'm gone, I won't leave you money, but I will leave you something worth a lot more, something that no one can ever take away from you, an education. For me, education has been the bridge to opportunities that my mother dreamed for me to have. Now, why a bridge? A bridge does many things. And if you think about the Golden Gate Bridge, it goes over water, it sways with the wind, but it's sturdy and resilient. My initial bridge took me out of South Central Los Angeles and into a whole new world, college. For some of the undergrads who also came from challenging backgrounds and are the first ones in your family to graduate from college, UCI may be your first bridge. Congratulations on taking that first step and making it across. I would ask all of you to remember to look back and extend a hand to those trying to get across that first bridge. I continued finding, building, and crossing bridges after finishing my medical degree, public health degree, and most recently my MBA. I'm privileged that I can look back and see how I, as one person, can make a difference in bridging the practice of medicine and public health. My bridge brings the voice of a Latina woman who has personal experience in addressing the many of the challenges that we as a society are striving to address. As a public health professional, I've developed and promoted statewide and national programs designed to keep moms and babies healthy. So when I deliver a baby and hand them off to the new parents, those programs that I help develop can continue touching the lives of my patients. If you're wondering why I pursued an MBA after already earning an MD and an MPH, the answer is simple. I have realized that my purpose in life is to connect people to their health. I had one more bridge to build. That is to bridge health with business and technology. This became clear to me when I saw my teenage son playing online games and much to my chagrin, sometimes up to several hours at a time. But he wasn't the only one enjoying online games in my family. So was my 78 year old mother. She loves Candy Crush. And that's when it hit me, bringing together my education, training and experience. I connected the dots and it occurred to me that the time spent playing a game can be combined with learning about your health. My mom has high blood pressure, but to this day, She's not too sure what the numbers mean. The solution? To gamify health. And that's exactly what I did. And now I'm the CEO and founder of a company I named Gamify Health. I completed my MBA with an emphasis in entrepreneur and innovation and used my MBA as the incubator for my startup. I could not have asked for a more supportive and inspiring environment. The first game we developed was covidblast.com. The timing was perfect to launch a game that could reinforce behaviors to avoid getting COVID. The current game we're developing and finalizing is Teen Mind Games. This game screens teenagers for depression and gets them the help they need. There is so much stigma and shame associated with depression and getting help is not always easy. Little did I know when we first started developing Teen Mind Games that depression would more than double during the pandemic. 
I'm still crossing that entrepreneur bridge, the bridge that joins personal health and universal gaming. At times, it feels like this bridge is made of rope. It's wobbly and standing upright is difficult. There have been times that I've almost fallen, but the networks and the support that the Mirai School provides me is pulling me across. I know some of you have completed your degree without having ever been on campus. I encourage you to continue building your Mirage Alumni Bridge, whether in person or virtually, and reach for the hand and encouragement that will help you cross your bridge. I know you can do it. Each one of you is a model of innovation. You have found ways to adapt. If someone would have told you a year ago, the entire world would be confined to their homes and you would be learning virtually, working remotely in study groups, working from home, and your kids would be homeschooling 100% virtually, you would not have believed it. Nobody would have, but that's exactly what you did. Many schools struggled to go virtual you benefited from the Mirage School's promise of leadership in a digitally driven world. And their early adoption of remote learning made it happen. When I was a student here, I was traveling a lot for work and going to professional meetings. I love the convenience of attending classes online. Many of us also benefited from virtual workouts Peloton became a household name, not just a business case study where we were reviewing to see if they were a high-tech company or an exercise machine. And all of you develop creative ways to network and support each other. One of my personal favorite virtual networks is the Mirage Dean Leadership Circle, the Mirage Alumni Group that I encourage all of you to join. I participated on a couple of Zoom gatherings during the heart of the sheltering in place. We had people from all over the United States and the world. We were sharing stories and experiences and it was, it was great. And for a short while, I forgot we were in a pandemic and under quarantine. Each of you has stories of how you endured the pandemic, how you found ways to continue your lives and how you coped with the loss of friends, acquaintances, and loved ones. And we will all laugh at the continuous, you are muted, we can't hear you. Each of you will have stories to share with the generations that follow. And now, as we see the light at the end of the tunnel, each of you can say that you survived and you showed just how resilient you are. The third and final takeaway that has been a huge source of my success is resiliency. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, resiliency is the ability of something to return to its original size and shape after being compressed or deformed. Resiliency is needed to withstand challenges, and in our case, the challenge was COVID. Based on our home, health, and personal experience, the amount of compression and deformation varied from person to person. Many of us lost family members, friends, acquaintances, or a job. And some of us have been sick ourselves. For me, in the early days of the pandemic, it was the uncertainty of whether or not I would get COVID while working in the hospital and caring for patients. I was afraid for my family, not for me. I didn't want to bring the infection home to them. In the beginning, there was so much we didn't know. Keeping my family safe was my biggest priority. It was not always easy though, when we had a shortage of personal protective equipment. 
but we all rose above our personal pandemic challenges. And you did it in addition to getting your degree. If you can get through this, which you did, you can get through anything. You have been stretched and as a result, you are stronger. Your innovation and resiliency have gotten you to this point. But now, where does that lead you? Remember, innovation, resiliency, and opportunities that leverage your ability to bridge worlds are unexpected and priceless lessons you have earned along with your degree. You've heard my story. What will your story be? What bridges will you discover or create? There will continue to be times when you will sway. You will feel like you're going to be blown off that bridge. But remember, you are resilient and innovative. And more importantly, not alone. You are a member of the Mirage family. Zot, zot, zot. Congratulations, class of 2021. Looming Chin. Ali Hassanzada. Juho Kim. Hejean Kim. Jean Sik Kim. My advisors and faculty from the bottom of my heart for helping me grow as a good researcher, teacher, and a better person. Also, I sincerely thank my family who has been always there for me. Salamida. Shafaning. NEA North. And Witta Prompajit. Puneet Sharma. I express my heartfelt gratitude to my family and my advisors. You have encouraged me, taught me, and supported me throughout this doctoral journey. Thank you. Yushue Sher. Iwe Derek Wong. I love UCI. I'll always remember this place. Shirjia Wu. Xiao Jisu. Nan Su. Hello, graduating class of 2021, and congratulations. You've toughed out a really difficult COVID year, and I'm sure you're ready to move on. You have worked very hard and you've done it to prepare yourself to become a future leader for our, in our new economy. And I think the next 10 years is going to be a very crucial period of time for you because that will determine where you're going to land, who you're going to be, and what is your path to the future. So it seems to me like it's very important to ask a question, which is, what will the next 10 years be like? Well, let me share my prediction with you. I think it's going to be stormy, fast changing, and very unpredictable. Let me try to explain. Um, by way of background, I should say that I chair three companies 
within the Mirage Investment Group, which we call MIG for short. There's a hedge fund group, uh, there is a private equity group and a real estate investment group. So my number one job in this multi-billion dollar enterprise is to figure out what's coming around the corner. And, and why, why is that so important? Is because in a very fast changing environment, it is so important for us to stay competitive by being at the very front edge of what is happening out there. And, and at the very front edge of any changes in technology that is happening. So we all know that our economy is going through a major change. It's going from the old industrial economy to a new knowledge economy. And during that past 10, 12 years, we know that some huge monster companies have been created um, from this new knowledge economy. And some segments in our economy have been almost devastated, such as retail. What a lot of people are not really focused on now, though, is what the next 10 years is about to bring. And I think the next 10 years is going to be a period of change and super steroids. Why is that? I think it's because two really major technological developments, uh, which is artificial intelligence and quantum uh, computing are going to come together and then and join the foundation, the base that is there and make a huge difference in, a, in everything, every aspect of our economy. So I think by some estimates, um, about a third of the S&P uh, companies uh, today are not going to exist in 10 years. Think about that, that's huge. Millions of jobs are going to be altered in a significant way or eliminated altogether. Some of them may be yours. So <laughs> I have to stop and say, I'm, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, well, is this, uh, Paul, is this a message of uh, congratulations? Or are you just trying to scare the hell out of us? Uh, so what I'm saying is that essentially, yes, it is a warning, but I would like for us to concentrate on the opportunities this will present. Please don't forget that every time change destroys the old, provide, it provides opportunities for new and for opportunities for new businesses. It could be not new opportunities for new enterprises from small to very large. And this is the thing to focus on, but you do need to know where to look. So, and I know right now you're probably ready to chuck all the books, all the assignments and say to hell with all of this, I'm done. Uh, and take a breather, and, and it's quite understandable. But after you get a rest, please do this. Roll up your sleeves and start becoming very familiar with every new technology that is coming along. Um, keep tabs on all of these developments. Ask yourself, what will that mean for my organization, for my company? What will it mean for me? And most importantly, what opportunities will it represent? This is how you will be a leader in tomorrow's future. And the winners and the losers are going to be the ones who are proactive versus reactive. It's as simple as that. So, also watch for convergences happening. The one thing that is for sure is that most of the time what will impact you is not coming at you in a straight line. 
it is through a zigzag of two or three different technologies converging and making possible things that none of them individually could have made possible. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind. But allow me to suggest an excellent book, uh, which is which I've read and enjoyed, and I think could be a starting point for you to dig into. It's called The Future is Faster Than You Think. And it's by, the author is Peter Diamandis, and, or Diamandis, and um, Peter is a serial entrepreneur, which is very closely tied to the various uh, movers and shakers in uh, Silicon Valley. And I think you'll find the book to be quite interesting. So I'm going to close with an old Chinese proverb, which I found in the fortune cookie. It says, luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So I wish you a great deal of luck. Thank you for listening. And this brings us to a conclusion of our virtual commencement ceremony this morning. I hope that everyone has enjoyed the ceremony and that you all have fun activities planned for the rest of the day. Now that many of us are vaccinated and are able to gather, I hope that you are able to spend the day with those loved ones that have provided you with support as you've gone through this degree. Relax, take a day off. Trust me, you've earned it. Now, this is not goodbye. It's called a commencement because it is the commencement of the relationship that you have with us going forward as an alum of the Mirage School of Business. Certainly, we want you to stay connected. We want to celebrate your accomplishments going forward, but also be a support for you as you take on new challenges in your career. So on behalf of the faculty and the staff of the Paul Mirage School of Business, congratulations again on this amazing achievement. Zot, zot, zot.